All right. Well, welcome back, everyone. And we continue our journey down the Aurora Innovation along with two hosts. My name is Aditya Samanth. I'm a principal database special solutions architect, and I get to work on Aurora, which is the star of the show. And along <laughs> with me, I have Adrian. Hey, folks. My name is Adrian. I am Aditya's co-host today. My name is Adrian, as you mentioned, and it's been a day. <laughs> uh, today, it has been a long day. Today, in most days, I'm a principal partner enterprise architect uh, here at AWS, working a lot with our tech partners. But interestingly enough, this is one of the highlights of what I get to do as a bit of an elective. I get to talk shop with different service team owners, uh, different specialist essays, and then, of course, with you, chat. Hi, how are you? Let us know in the comments how you're doing, but here we're actually wanting to dig into something that is pretty important to me as an InfraNops guy. How do you do cross-region availability in a sensible way with Aurora? I've never been able to answer this question, but I have a good feeling that sitting here with Dan, we're going to get pretty close to perfect on that answer. Is that about right, Dan? I'll find out myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is not Adrian. Uh, my, <laughs> my name is Dan Blinner. Uh, I'm a solutions architect, and I specialize in Aurora DSQL. Excellent, Dan. Well, Dan, I know you're going to talk about multi-region Aurora DSQL, but we have a quick bit of trivia before we get started. <laughs> oh, no. So the question for the audience is, what is a multi-region Aurora DSQL cluster made of? Is it A, two regions, B, two link clusters and a witness region, C, up to five regions? I think we're going to find out throughout the, this session, aren't we? Absolutely, yeah. All right, well, why don't you tell us uh, what this specific issue is of this multi-region availability and how does DSQL solve it? Yeah, sure. Uh, so one of the things that differentiates DSQL from a lot of our other database products uh, in res with respect to multi-region is that it uses synchronous cross-region replication. It is always strong and consistent uh, in both regions. So if you commit a transaction in one region, uh, that data is immediately available uh, in the other region. So there's no replication lag, there's no eventual consistency. And so that's one of the primary differentiators uh, with Aurora DSQL. And what that means is it makes DSQL great for multi-region active active use cases where you're running your entire application stack in both regions. You're taking both region writes uh, uh, in both those regions. So with DSQL, there's no primary or secondary region relationship. They're both equal peers. They can both take both region writes uh, equally. And with the database being totally serverless, it makes it real easy because there's no infrastructure to manage uh, or to provision. Uh, and it makes the overall process of running a multi-region database um, uh, much easier uh, than, than otherwise. Yeah, well, you say that, but we want to <laughs> see. Truth's in the pudding, man, because, <laughs> because uh, you know, no replication lag, ability to read, write from any, any it sounds it sounds magic. I mean, how are you beating the rules of physics? Well, you know, you can't beat the rules of physics. You know, you do, if, you're, if your clusters are far away, you know, you still have to spend some cross-region latency, but there are some optimizations that make that a lot easier. Uh, okay. And so let me show you how to set up a, a multi-region cluster, uh, and then we can talk about, uh, I can demonstrate how uh, cross-region replication works uh, with Aurora DSQL. So uh, here we are in the DSQL console. Uh, I've got two tabs open here. Okay. One is in uh, US East 1 or Northern Virginia, and the other is in US East 2 or uh, in Ohio. Now, when you create a multi-region cluster with Aurora DSQL, there's actually three regions. There's two linked clusters, uh, and then there's a third region called a witness region. Mm -hmm. uh, and that witness region has two primary roles. Number one, it participates in transaction commit quorum. Uh, and number two, it votes in the case of a network partition. It decides which cluster stays in and which cluster gets voted off the island, essentially. And so uh, when we create a multi-region cluster, we often talk about two regions, but you really get three. Uh, the witness region is not a resource that you can use, uh, but it is a very important part of, um, uh, of a multi-region cluster. Okay, so what you're saying is that it stays consistent and it stays up. Absolutely, absolutely. So yep. for audiences, what does that mean in terms of the CAP theorem? So we would love to hear from you. Yeah, wow. okay, sure. Uh, so uh, well, you can call DSQL a CP database. Oh, uh, you gave the answer, man. That was for them. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> but no, that isn't the whole story because okay. um, uh, 
with a uh, with a, a Aurora SQL, because we're multi AZ and we're multi region, uh, we can offer strong consistency mm-hmm. uh, even in the face of a loss of an AZ or even in the face of a loss of a region. So it's CP but also A. So you can always stay consistent, always available, even in the face of a region outage or an AZ outage. Okay, okay, you you redeemed yourself. All right, good, good. <laughs> All right, well, let's see the demo. All right, cool. So, uh, again, uh, let me go to uh, North Virginia here. Okay. Uh, I'll create cluster. I'll pick a multi-region cluster. Okay. You can run DSQL in single-region mode as well. It works fantastic in single-region mode, mm-hmm. uh, but we're going to do multi-region for this. And so here is the super complicated workflow for creating <laughs> a multi-region uh, active-active database. So uh, we can decide if we want deletion protection on or off. Um, here we're going to pick the witness region. So we're in US East 1. We're going to pick the witness region. Uh, we never send data someplace where that you don't know about. So you pick all the regions involved in your cluster. Uh, we're not going to send you know uh, your data to a different country, to a different place. You know, you you pick everything uh, with DSQL. Uh, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to give this a name as well. We're just going to call it my cluster, and I'm going to hit create. And that's it for this side uh, of the. Uh, of the cluster. And so now what I'll do is I'll click complete multi-region setup and I'll pick my other region, my other data region or late cluster region. This is US East 2 mm-hmm. and I'll hit that. Mm-hmm. And that's going to ask me the same questions again. Uh, so I'll just go down here and I'll just say, you know, my cluster again. It doesn't need to be the same name, but we'll do that for uh, the sake of this demo. Okay. Well, that, that's... I don't know. That's maybe like five or six clicks, even when you're creating multi-region cluster. That's that's amazing. That's well, I do have one or two more left. So okay. I think we, we, we might you. hit six or seven. <laughs> How dare you get us <laughs> double-digit clicks? Maybe. So now we have to finish this process. We have to say peer in US East one, and then over in US East one, we have to confirm that we're going to peer. So it's like a friend request, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to add you to the top eight on the wall? That's a good question. I'm not dated myself with that reference, but it is my space to do what I choose. Uh, I see what you did there. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So now this is creating. Uh, so if I go back to here, let's just clear that. We'll look at my clusters. Uh, and you'll see here in US East 1, this is creating. Uh, and I believe this is Ohio. This is also creating. Um, now, this is going to take a few minutes uh, to get done. So I've got another cluster already uh, called Demo that's already spun up. Uh, so let me show you what that looks like. So I click into the Demo cluster. This is just one I created a little while ago. Notice that there's not much here. Yeah. There's, there's no there's no infrastructure for you to see. There's nothing to provision. There's no capacity that you have to specify. No uh, VPCs. No VPCs. No security groups. No subnet groups. You know you don't have to worry about a writer node and a read replica and what happens if the writer <laughs> fails over. Like there's none of that because this database is completely serverless. All right, you're you're out of control because <laughs> it should you or any DBA or anybody come up to an infrastructure person or an ops person or even just like a dev say, hey, go provision me. This this environment capable of X million IOPS or this type of performance, and here's my P90 and latency, and you go and try to figure out exactly what it is that you're trying to do, that's all obfuscated. That's a couple clicks away. That's just not even how to worry about the problem at all. It's fantastic. Absolutely. This database scales on your behalf from zero to massive, uh, and it remains uh, uh, available. So we automatically handle component failure, AZ failure, and even region failure automatically for you. Wow. So as I click through, uh, there's not much here. There's uh, the Amazon resource name. There's the endpoint. This is the host name that you would plug into your driver or database tool. There's a cluster ID. Um, you know, I can go into peers, and you can see here uh, this cluster is in US East 1. Actually, I'm in Ohio right now. So you'll see my my other side is in US East 1, and I'm using a witness in US West 2. Um, and then there's some metrics. I can look at my CloudWatch metrics uh, to see what my database is doing. Notice you're not going to see things like CPU mm-hmm. or IO, no low-level host information. Uh, it's all about connections, transactions, and throughput. And then you know you can tag it as usual, but this this is it. This is this is all you get with the console. There's not much to to manage here. You basically just need to manage backups and then make sure that your uh, your schema is correct. Yeah, you click a few buttons and you have a multi-region cluster that doesn't require failover or failback. That's pretty amazing. That's right. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. But I'm a very very visual person. How can I trust it? How, how can you trust? How can I trust my right? In my primary region goes to the secondary region. I'm not having deadlocks or anything like that. Can we? 
take a look at something like that because I remember in my primitive brain many, many years ago uh, having resource contention with devs, both working in the database at the exact same time, and the scheduling app went down, and we were down for like two weeks. Yeah, that's a big concern uh, with multi-region databases uh, is uh, collision detection or conflict resolution, uh, and DSQL does that for you automatically. So, really? uh, strangely enough, I have a demo prepared to show you exactly how that works. Cool. All right. <laughs> so, I've got two terminal sessions here. Uh, one is in US East 1, and one is in US East 2. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, connects to my database just using psql just normal standard postgres tools nothing special to download or use uh, the only th thing different is that we don't support password auth we use im auth and that means we have to generate a token so i'll do that with this command and then i'll okay. log in with psql so i've got a session now in us east one and i'm going to do the same thing over in us east two all right Hey, Dan, for the benefit of an uh, audience that may or may not know, what exactly is a token in this context? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, a, an, uh, it's a piece of encryption information uh, that represents um, your, uh, your identity, mm -hmm. uh, and it is used in the place of a password. It's temporary, uh, and so those tokens expire, um, and uh, that way there's no sort of fetching passwords and no possibility of losing passwords. Or writing uh, them under the keyboard. What, yeah, or you know, there's no pa uh, post-it note on, on the laptop, you know, or you don't write on the back of your hand. Uh, <laughs> so it's a lot more secure. It is kind of the gold standard in passwords, right? Like, it is, it is, it's complex, it expires within a few minutes, yep. and, and you can't lose it. No, you can't lose it. Nope. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, cool. All right. All right, so uh, I've got two sessions logged in. Uh, let's see. So let me, let me just see if I have my table here. Okay. So I'll do a very complicated query. So let's start from <laughs> my demo table. And you can see that table does not yet exist. Mm -hmm. So let me just make sure it doesn't exist over in the other region. Okay. So, so nothing up my sleeve. So now let me create this table, create table demo, uh, ID, int primary key. Oops, if I can type today. And we'll do a message with 50 characters. Unfortunately for Dan, uh, the the typing bar has been set very high today. That's what I keep hearing. That's <laughs> what I keep hearing. So I, I'm hoping to uh, I'm hoping to live up to that expectation. Uh, so now if I do a query, uh, you can see you know the table's empty. And if I do the same thing over in uh, Ohio, you'll see that uh, that table exists. So I only had to create the table in one place mm -hmm. and it'll automatically replicate it to the other. Now if I do an insert here, insert into demo values. 10 for Aurora's 10 year anniversary. We'll say, <laughs> Happy birthday, Aurora. Happy, Happy birthday, Aurora! Exclamation, exclamation. Smiley face. <laughs> no, you can't put that. <laughs> yeah. it'll, it'll just live in our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now if I do a select, you'll see there it is. And if I do a select over in the other region, you'll see that it is there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and now if I insert a record here, insert into demo values 20, uh, can't. Uh, can't wait for dsql to be 10. You know, still a few years left to go there. All right. And if we do a select again, you'll see that we have both records. Here we have both records. Now, so the, the replication is bidirectional. This means you can have true active, active mm -hmm. applications. Your application stack can run in both regions. You don't need primary, secondary. You don't need sort of a primary failover mode. You can do active, active. Uh, and you can use latency-based routing to route customers to your application stack uh, in a region that is nearest to them. Okay. Which which begs the question: yeah. If you're trying to update the same thing from both regions at the same time, mm -hmm. yes. what happens? Yeah, well, let me show you. So this database is built to handle that for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so one thing that we do with DSQL is we use optimistic concurrency control. There's no pessimistic locking whatsoever in the database. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, it gives great performance at scale. Uh, but what it means is that uh, as you're writing transactions, you don't have to worry about locking. You don't have to worry about what else is happening on the system. You just sort of write your naive queries and let the database protect you from concurrency collisions. So let me show you how that works. And no locking means no blocking and no deadlocks. Absolutely How cool right. is that? Yeah, that's right. Uh, all right, so I'll start a transaction here, uh, and I'll update uh, demo. Uh, we'll set my message equal to updated in US East 1, mm -hmm. where ID equals 10. Okay, so I'll do my update, but I won't commit my transaction just yet. This transaction is still open. Okay. So over here, I'll say uh, update demo set message equal to uh, ha ha ha, <laughs> where ID, oops, where I'm... 
ID equals 10. Okay. So now this is going to auto commit. Okay. So this, this transaction is committed. So now if I do a select, you'll see there's my new value. Uh, and now if I try to commit over here, even though this update was made in the other region, uh, mm -hmm. in, you know, uh, in Ohio, if I try to commit my transaction here, the database knows that the row I'm trying to update has been updated by another transaction, even though it's in the other region and it throws this error. Okay. And so as a developer, what I should do uh, is catch this exception and be willing to retry my transaction. So instead of locking records and maybe waiting for the lock to clear, mm -hmm. instead I'm just going to run my transaction and catch this error be, uh, if the database protects me from a, con uh, a uh, concurrency collision. So yeah, that's the is, overall model. And I think this is this is important in terms of relational databases because relational databases give you that consistency, yeah. right? Strong <laughs> consistency. It doesn't matter where you wrote it, you can always read it. Absolutely. As opposed to something like a NoSQL database, which is, you know, where we're making that change uh, in a bespoke manner. We are saying, well, last writer wins and you may lose data. Right. Mm -hmm. Where in this case, the first, first writer wins. Absolutely. Yep. And so what this means is that uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to retry my transaction and I'm going to rerun all my application logic in that transaction, which means that I'm going to reread the data and I may make a different business decision based on the new state of the data. And so this allows me to, uh, you know, to catch changes uh, and not have to worry about uh, what might be happening somewhere else in the other region. So this whole retry logic um, is uh, a really great way of running transactions at scale uh, in a multi-region active active way. Makes sense. Also understand that uh, concurrency collisions are a natural part of using a database. So this is not a problem. Uh, it's just, you know, that's always going to happen with a database, especially, uh, you know, with a, a complicated application or under heavy load. Uh, but what you, do, you, what you do need to worry about, though, is making sure that you don't get a lot of these. So getting OCC conflicts is fine, but getting a lot of them is not fine. And so what you want to do is make sure that you're not having hot write keys. You want to design your data model such that you don't have a whole bunch of processes trying to update the same row at the same time because that will uh, that will cause a lot of concurrency collisions and slow your performance down so make sure your rights are distributed across your key space and also you I think one of the the things that we wa want to do in dsql is to keep those transactions short Yes, short, fast transactions. So dSQL is optimized for OLTP transactions. So you okay. want short, fast transactions uh, where there is a transaction timeout of five minutes, and so you're just not going to have long-running queries. Uh, and so dSQL is not optimized for OLAP uh, or for heavy-duty reporting workloads. Uh, short, fast transactions is what you want with dSQL. Yeah, and, and you know the the other effect of having long transactions is that they may never be able to commit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So with these short, fast transactions, uh, you know um, that whatever's going to happen is going to happen quickly. Uh, so you know you can't you can't uh, start a transaction with millions of rows and then wait for it to commit an hour later. Uh, you just can't do that. So uh, that also means that you can't tie up resources. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and with an optimistic concurrency database, you know, there's no cross-region lock management either. So you know, if that transaction fails, there's no cleanup to do uh, because of you know open locks or whatever. So there's no rollback. Exactly right. Yep. There's nothing to roll back, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. And so with this model, I think um, we probably, um, the developers may have to do a little bit of change in the way they write code. Yeah, absolutely. So instead of taking a lock and waiting, uh, waiting on that lock, uh, or maybe you know timing out in the lock, um, the overall model is just try your transaction and be willing to retry up to a certain number of times. So mm -hmm. you know maybe you try up to five times, maybe you add a bit of exponential back off and jitter, which is a lot easier than it sounds, uh, just to <laughs> just to make sure that your transactions don't recollide uh, over and over again. Uh, but that's the overall model, uh, and that really uh, will uh, will protect you from uh, uh, from concurrent collisions and it'll allow you to really run a lot of transactions at scale. Yeah, and we have some great guidance available on how to program and how to avoid those collisions and how to keep scaling, like Mark said, to infinity. Absolutely. And yep. beyond, potentially. <laughs> and to be <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for, for tuning in. And Dan, seriously, thank you for helping demystify this. Sure. But to answer the question, the trivia question that Aditya asked earlier, you already gave it to us. It's two linked clusters and a witness region that comprise an Aurora DSQL cluster. So thank you so much for hanging in there and participating. Dan, we've got about a minute left. Any last minute guidance that you might be able to offer the audience? Absolutely. Start playing with DSQL today. We'd love to get uh, uh, about 100 of you to start spinning up clusters. Uh, <laughs> okay. And, and how are you going to do that? This is the last chance to take that survey and yes, claim those 20 bucks for 
doing those experiments with DCQL. And come see us at reInvent. We're running some hands-on workshops. Uh, I'll be out there, so come stop by and uh, learn more about DCQL. Me too, me too. Oh, come, cool. Come see us. Me three. So, <laughs> but until then, hang tight. We'll be right back as we begin our wrap-up. It's been a day. We're glad you hung out with us. So come back and see us. We'll be here waiting for you. <laughs>